Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. This is a lot of glass. This chandelier has a 37 inch drop, has a full spread of 32 inches. Each of these arms is right at 12 inches center to center with a seven inch rise. That basically makes it about twice the size of any similar chandelier I've ever had here in the lab. And uh, similar to other chandeliers I've had in the lab, there's always one broken arm. Which is not too surprising because this is pretty heavy right here. And the first thing we've got to do is take it apart, clean everything. Because it's been hanging from the same spot in the ceiling in the house where it came out of roughly 80 maybe 90 years and uh, first thing we've got to do is clean it up the design motif is something called olive sometimes called thumbprint this appears to be pressed glass, not uh, cut crystal. This would be incredibly expensive if it was actually made from uh, cut crystal. Kind of uh, clunky assembly here. Pretty heavy. Hope to come up with something a little neater than that. But uh, when I first saw this thing, it was covered and crystal chains and crystal pendants. And it had these little napkin ring things hanging on each arm, which I couldn't take off because the bobiches were in the way. Right now, I don't have any idea how this body comes apart, which has got to separate in the middle, but uh, I don't know if the bottom comes off or if the top comes off or how it's fastened together, and I'm kind of at a disadvantage because I can't grab a hold of these arms to get any leverage. In any case, all this glass on the trunk has to come off. So... I have made myself a little bench clamp, which is going to clamp on to the metal part, the body, and hold all of this in place while I disassemble the top. I'm not sure if that gets me any closer to taking it apart. I'm beginning to think it may be a one-piece body. But get this pipe off after I let some liquid wrench soak into it and we'll see what we find. Uh, 
Oh, yes. So, what we have here is a one piece body, and uh, the wiring junction is pulled up inside this pipe. Well, this project's going to go on hold for a few days. All these glass parts are going to be soaked in ammonia water and then thoroughly rinsed. Um, in the meantime, I've got other stuff to do. One of those is figuring out how I'm going to put a wiring splice in this piece right here. So, stay tuned, which uh, for all you people watching the video is about three seconds from now. This is the most stressful part of the entire job. I really needed to pay attention so I didn't even try to narrate it as I went along. Every time an arm is handled, it's another chance for something to go wrong. The arms are set in the end caps with plaster. That's where they seem to always break. Some people dig out the broken piece and reset the arm, but it's obvious that one light is lower than all the others. My solution is to drill out both pieces with a diamond core bit and splice the pieces together with a piece of polished steel tubing. The arm has to be held absolutely rigid. Any shaft or flexing could put the bit in the bind and shatter the arm. This calls for a creative clamping on the drill plates. The diamond core bit is a piece of steel pipe with diamond dust embedded in it. It cuts quickly and cleanly. It has to be kept cool with a constant spray of water. The slightest amount of heat will burn the adhesive that holds the diamond dust and the bit is worthless. I've made this fixture for holding on to this arm because nobody has enough hands for this kind of work. This piece of pipe is already set into the arm here with uh, clear epoxy because that's going to show. And I'm going to be using PC7 for the cup because we're hoping that's not going to show. Now, it was a pretty good deal to get the uh, holes in both pieces as close as they were but in order to get the angle right I had to open up this quite a bit so that I could put it in the right position so now mix up some epoxy set it in this uh, cup here do everything possible not to get it inside the pipe that would not be good and uh, then we clamp it in position and let it sit overnight Now the purpose of this little 
fixture here was to get this at 90 degrees to this, which is the way it's going to go when it's on the chandelier. Because there's no bending this, for sure. Now, the PC7 works pretty good, but it does take a full 24 hours for it to set up. And in the meantime, while it's soft, if you've got any kind of weight or something on the uh, part, it can sag, it can bend. And that is why I have it set up like this, so that uh, that's not going to happen. The way these arms are made is fascinating. They are handmade. Starts off with the glass blower, pulling a big glob of red hot molten glass out of the furnace, and he blows on into it and expands it out like a bottle or a balloon, then continues to work it into a pipe, because that hollow space inside stays there in the center all the way through. And when he's got it all rolled out, one big long straight stick, he'll run these ridges in it, creating this beading effect. And the last step will be to bend it into these two S-curves. All the while, that center wire channel remains in place. Now each of these is very similar, but no two are identical. And what that means is that sometimes that passageway does not line up with the fitting in this wire, in, in this fitting here. So, I strongly suspect that when this lamp was made, the wires were run through it, it was run through the fitting, and then the fitting was glued on. Because there's a few of these where the passageway and the fitting simply don't line up. Instead of having a nice round hole when I look down in it, the two holes don't line up, and I've got kind of a crescent moon effect there. And that's a big problem when I have to rewire. What I have to do is grind that glass passageway out so that it lines up with that hole. And the only way to do that is just one of these diamond bits. This is a solid one, and uh, it can cut on the side or on the end. And I've got to get that down in there, which, as you can see, is fairly short. After grinding it back down round again, we're now ready to drill some glass. Now I think I have all the arms prepared where I can get them rewired with uh, the least amount of trouble. And uh, these things usually go one of two ways. One, no trouble at all. One, a lot of trouble. And it always comes down to if you have seven arms, seven will go well, and the eighth one will take as much time as the other seven did. So, 
The spread from here to here is basically 12 inches. But the wire that I'm going to use to wire each arm is this long, which is about 45 inches. Reason being, the socket is going to stick up probably about that far. Then at the other end, I'm going to have to pull these wires around this corner, up into the body, and up into the pipe where I'll have to make the splice. So there will be a considerable amount of extra wire. Plus, I have to trim all the insulation off this end because of the way I'm going to have to rewire this thing to get it around this corner. Now the first thing I do is strip back about two inches of insulation from the wire for reasons that will be apparent in just a moment. What I've got to do is get the wire all the way through and then to this corner. Now I feed it in through this end. Once I get it in the arm, it's easy to push because the insides of a crystal arm are always smooth. If this were cast brass, it's possible for it to have a texture like a coral reef. Got it all the way around. Now I have this special tool I've made. It's a piece of piano wire with a tiny hook built into the end of it. And its job is to reach in here and snag that wire and start pulling it out. Usually takes a couple of turns at it, but it will come out. Once I've got the insulated part, pat around the corner, comes through without too much trouble. I've made another custom fixture here because of the peculiar way this thing has to be rewired. And this is just a 5 16 steel rod. And this is the body of the chandelier, and it will fit on there fairly stable so I can work with it as I put the arms back on. Each of the holes has a number. That one right there is 40. And that corresponds to the number on each of the arms. In most chandeliers, the wiring connection would be inside the body. But this is too small. So what I've got to do is work the wire up through here. Until can screw this in. Being very careful once it's about halfway down I apply my thread lock and continue to twist this keeping this wire from getting too bound up. And right there. Now that is why they have the numbers on here. It's because they actually took the time to make sure that the threads on this piece match the threads on this piece and they tighten up pretty much at the 12 o'clock position. The first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of shrink wrap tubing is fairly large 
and slide it down the bundle of wires to where the pipe connects because I don't want to have the pipe turning as I tighten it down and possibly cut into uh, the wires. Just a, a safety precaution. In order to get a better fit inside the pipe, I'm going to stagger the uh, junctions one up high and then cut these wires off a little shorter. Now this isn't really the point of no return, it's uh, more like the point of exceedingly difficult return. But uh, once these connections are made, you're pretty much committed all the way until you actually plug it into the uh, outlet and see if the lights actually work. So, one point to consider, all wire that is sold for lamps and lighting like this with the uh, Siamese uh, cable, one side has smooth insulation, and the other side has rigid insulation. And that allows you to keep track of it from one end to the other, especially in a case like this where they're silver, you really can't see that. But each of these wires in this little bundle are all the smooth ones. And each of the wires in this little bundle are all the ridged ones. And you've got to keep that straight. Because if you don't, by the time you figure out that it's wrong, You've either blown a breaker or you've just simply got to take the entire thing apart again. Now, I prefer junctions where all the wires are side by side like that. Unfortunately, in this connection, I can't actually do that. So what I have to do now is strip back a very large piece of this wire, which is difficult by itself. Because this is actually how much it takes to get a good splice on this sort of uh, connection. Do the same thing on the other side. And for this type of connection, you want the wire wrapped around it like it's a coil spring. As tightly as possible. Well, it would help to put the right one where it belongs. And then this one goes down here. In the Secret Underground Laboratory, all connections are soldered and then they're covered with shrink wrap tubing, which is this miraculous material that uh, when you heat it up, it shrinks. Not only is it uh, good for sealing up connections, it also resists abrasions. So I use it as reinforcement in places where I'm afraid that the wire might get rubbed against sharp edges. Now just as an extra safety precaution, put a little bit of wax at that point. And also, here inside the pipe, I took a die grinder before I ran the wire through it and relieved that edge so that it's nice and smooth, no sharp corner at all. And 
we're over at the BF bench because I need more room to lay all this stuff out. And I just did a test fit of all these pieces to see how they go on and get them in the right order. And I made note of wherever there's going to be glass on metal contact, such as this base column, put a little foam washer in here for that cap. And then these pieces with the piece of blue tape, that's where glass is going to be contacting glass. And to deal with that, I've got a tube of clear silicone. And all I'm going to do is put a very, very thin bead. Because what I want to do is just create a thin cushion so that whenever the chandelier is moved, whether you're changing a light bulb or something like that, you uh, won't hear the tinkling and the clinking, which is how all of this stuff gets chipped. If you can hear it ring as it bangs together, it's always possible for a piece of it to flake off. And I will let this sit for a couple hours, probably overnight, and then start assembly. Once this silicone is cured, And we will start putting this chandelier back together. Now I've got the loop on it. Everything is snug. But nothing is tight, and you'll notice there's no clinking or ringing because I don't have any glass on glass or glass on metal connections. And that was exactly what I wanted. Now I'm ready to start assembling the light sockets, and I have to be careful because there's an order which things go. The first thing is these uh, crystal napkin rings that are supposed to hang like this when the chandelier is uh, in place. But I'm going to put them up here with this piece of foam to keep it out of the way so I won't be banging into it. Next goes the bobiche, which uh, just goes under like that. I thought about maybe making some kind of washer or foam pad or something to keep it from... Uh, rattling around like that, but this is the most visible part of the chandelier, and it's got this neck here, which originally was nickel plated. Most of that's tarnished and gone away, but I'm going to leave it like that. And then a little bit of a blue thread lock. Always use thread lock on all our threaded connections. And with the thread lock, I can get it that tight just with my fingers, and when we go to change a light bulb or something like that, this is not going to come loose. Now the next step is very important in any kind of electrical work involving lighting. Now with the, uh, the main junction connection down there at the body, I talked about how the wires had uh, different insulation. One side has a ridge on it. Other side is smooth. When it comes down to the uh, sockets here, one side has a silver screw, one side has a brass screw. On the smooth insulation side, that wire goes to the brass screw. And the ridge wire goes to the silver screw. But before I do that, I've got to tin the wires. Now, tinning the wires means putting a drop of solder on the tip of the strands of the wire. And the purpose of that is to make all those many strands of fine wires into one solid wire. That's all it takes like that, just a little bit. What it does is that when you put the wire under a screw and tighten the screw down, the wires can't spread out, which would make them get loose. 
and you always wrap them around the screw clockwise so that when you tighten it down it draws the wire under the screw instead of pushing it out. Okay. Well, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. I thank you for sticking this way through a, a rather stressful project. I will be very happy when this is uh, on the road and back to the customer's house. So, again, thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. And uh, hope to see you again in the next video. Again, thank you.